All right, so um, thanks again. Excited to be here uh, with CJ and Sara. Excited to see so many familiar faces in the room. Uh, this is just an incredible opportunity for us here. We're looking forward to having a great season. We've got great uh, senior leadership with CJ, Sara, Jalen Brown, who's not here right now. She was scheduled to be here, but has concussion-like symptoms. And then Chen Yua, those are our four seniors and a, a phenomenal group. I'm happy to be on this journey with them. And uh, looking forward to answering your questions about this coming season. Hi, Michelle Smith, Pac12.com. Uh, Charmin, head coach Charmin Smith, have you gotten used to hearing that yet? Um, I guess so. Yeah, I'm. I'm. I'm really comfortable. You know, uh, it's not something that I saw coming. You know, I don't know that any of us anticipated Lindsay leaving for the NBA. Uh, but it feels good to be back, and it feels right. Uh, Charmin, it's great to see you up there, first of all. Um, with all your uh, experience uh, coaching under Tara Vanderveer and Coach Gottlieb and coaching in the WNBA, who do you think you're going to channel, or what do you think you're going to channel when you're coaching? Like, what did you? Yeah, uh, that's a good question. Uh, I, th I think I've been fortunate enough to work for and learn from a number of phenomenal coaches. Uh, obviously, Tara has known me the longest, um, being that she recruited me and I played for her. Uh, spent some time with Kathy Inglis, uh, just an extraordinary coach in person. Um, and then Joanne Boyle and Lindsay Gottlieb, and finally in, in New York with Katie. And I think I've taken something from, something from each of them, and I see it come out in myself during different moments, you know, depending on what I'm trying to accomplish, what I'm trying to instill in our team. And so I, I think it's just going to be a blend of everything in my past. And, uh, coaching in the WNBA and playing in the WNBA and uh, playing overseas, what about that do you think you're going to bring to your coaching experience and your, and your players there at Cal? Well, anytime you have a chance to really coach at the highest level, I think it – you know, really enhances your skills. And having the opportunity to work with Tina Charles and, you know, Bria Hartley and uh, Amanda Zowie B, I mean, just pheno phenomenal professionals. Uh, and, and that was a great learning experience for me. And I think it also showed me that, you know, just reinforced that I do know how to coach this game. Uh, I have been doing it for a really long time. Kevin Dana, Stanford Women's Basketball Radio. Coach, uh, what have these last few months been like for you? Go from Berkeley to the Liberty, back in the East Bay. Been a whirlwind for you? Yeah, like more like a boomerang, you know? Like, um, you know, I, I rented out my house. I thought I was gone, gone. And um, so when I first got back to um, Berkeley, I was staying with my neighbors, looking outside of their window, staring at my house that I own. Uh, so... Uh, that was interesting, um, but it's 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 been nonstop, you know, just trying to uh, get ready and, and do a great job of recruiting and then also do a great job of prepping our team for what's to come with the season, and um, I'm excited that I'm actually enjoying those challenges, and, you know, hard work, fast pace, none of that has ever been something that I've shied away from, so uh, we're handling it well. Hi, ladies. Uh, Janie McCauley from Associated Press. W when Sharman was hired, you know, there was so much discussion about this will be a seamless transition. She's been part of the program. N now that it's a couple months, I don't know, a few months into it, how smooth has this been and, and how special to, to have her back and running the show with, with a lot of familiar assistant coaches as well? I think it's been a really good transition. Um, Sharman's always been that consistent coach that we've had and she always comes in ready to work, like knows what we should be doing, and we want to work for her and all the other coaches. And I think it was probably the best possible 
thing that could happen for us because we know Sharman, we love Sharman, we've always loved her. So for her to come back, it was like incredible and we couldn't have thought of anything better. I agree. Sharman <laughs> <laughs> no. uh, over here in the corner. Yeah, Ben from GoldenBearPark.com. Uh, just wanted to know, this is both question both players and Sharman. So Sharman, just wanted to know, in what ways are you going to be similar to, to Lindsay and in what ways are your teams going to be different? And then for the players, some question, just how is she similar to Lindsay and then in what ways is, is Coach Sharman different from Coach Lindsay? You want to go first? You can go first. I thought so. <laughs> 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 um, you know, uh, Lindsay and I had coached together for, what, seven years or so, I've known each other for about 12 or 13 years. And so there are a lot of similarities in how we – feel about the game of basketball, how we feel about empowering young women, and what our purpose is in this sport. And I think that's where we are like really um, strongly aligned. Uh, and I think that's why we worked so well together for so long. Uh, in terms of the differences, I don't know. I, I just know me and what I need as a head coach and what's going to be important to me. And we've talked about it as a team that the number one thing for me, and it's really come out during this transition, is just having people that are willing. Like, that's my word. I want people who are willing. I want people who are willing to work for the program, work for their teammates. I want people who are willing to commit to being at Cal, being at the number one academic or number one public institution in the country, um, you know, and people that are willing to compete. And I think. That's what I'm looking for. That's what I'm trying to pull out of our team consistently every single day. And I think as long as we have those pieces, we're heading in the right direction. Um, I also think to build off what Sara touched on earlier is how consistent Charmin is and how every day she has a goal for us. And, you know, we trust in her and she trusts in us to get, what, get done what we're supposed to get done. Um, yeah. I think the differences between Charmin and Lindsay uh, – just the personalities are inherently different. So Sharman's very like tough on us, but in a good way. And um, she's very like attention to detail. That's what she's really into. So. Viet Nguyen, BearsInsider.com. This is for the players. Um, just wondering that you're in your senior year um, and just thinking about like what you're hoping to get personally and also for the team this year. I know, Sarah, for example, you haven't played much due to injury. So you'll be curious to hear about what you hope for out of this campaign. Yes, injuries really do suck, but it's kind of given me an outside view of everyone on the court and being able to tell people, oh, this is the look that you should be making because I've seen it so many times. And yes, it's actually been really hard for me to make those looks too because I feel like that's it's a very in-game situation. I haven't had many of that, but I think that I play without fear, and I think that I have a very aggressive mindset, a scores mentality, and I think that playing with the team right now, I've gelled really well, and so have our freshmen. They've come in and given everything we've needed them to give, so I think I'm really excited for our team, and I'm ready to show everyone what I can do. Um, for me as well, um I think my transition from freshman to sophomore and sophomore to junior year have been physical. And I think this year it's probably going to be a lot more mental, um, especially with the big role I'm stepping into, seeing as all the change that we've gone through. Um, I think that my mindset has to change to be more aggressive. And my goal is to have more of a scorer's mentality and to realize that you know my role is a lot more impactful than maybe it was in the previous years. Um, and also having a lot more confidence in myself as well. So. Cheryl Coward, hoopfeet.com. Um, for coach and then for the players, you tweeted out uh, the status with you uh, doing some Muay Thai and said that, you know, if you, if, you if you can't do it, you won't ask your players to do it or something like that. First of all, how long have you been doing that? Um, look pretty boss. And <laughs> for the players, how hard is that to incorporate that into your workouts? Was it a challenge? Do you get beat? <laughs> so I've been doing Muay Thai for about four years now. Um, and it's definitely my passion outside of basketball. I found a whole um, new community. Um, I have you know, new teammates, new family um, with our Muay Thai-minded 
uh, family and, and Coach Jay, and, and it's been truly phenomenal. And I've learned another level of discipline and commitment, um, the technique and the skill that it takes to learn the art of Muay Thai has definitely made me a better basketball coach. And the tweet about you know, not asking them to do anything that I'm not willing to do. I mean, I think my experience playing in the WNBA, you know, playing uh, at Stanford and going to Final Fours, like, I hope that they trust in me because I've done it as a player. Uh, you know, I, I want them to be able to hear me say, like, this is the way, and not just because I think so, but because I've actually experienced it. Um, I also think that's the main reason why our relationship with Charmin is so strong is because she understands she's been through, you know, every step that we've taken thus far. Um, and going back to Muay Thai, it's really hard. Like we've done it twice. We've had like two sessions this year and last year, I think. And it was really fun, but it's really hard and you have to really be locked in mentally. Um, but the payoff is amazing. The community that they have built and how they support each other in the process of, you know, learning and how uh, willing you have to be to learn and open, open yourself up to new things is really um, nice, and it was a really, really good experience. I wasn't able to do the Muay Thai, but it was crazy to see how when everyone got there, everyone was like laughing, and then once it started, se like the most serious faces I've ever seen, everyone was really into it. So you could tell everyone was gaining that discipline that Sharman always talks about, and now we understand, we'll have a greater understanding of why Sharman coaches the way she does and the discipline factor in her coaching. CJ, I'm curious as a media studies major, what this uh, what this experience is like for you, uh, whole basketball media day. Um, unfortunately, I've actually changed my major since then, <laughs> so I'm actually a social major now. Um, but still, I think with what I want to do career wise, having like this media social media experience is really important for me, and I think nowadays it's important for everyone um, in the world that we're in today. So it's still pretty impactful, you know. Maybe not if I was a media studies major, but yeah. Sherman, much uh, is made of uh, who you're losing, who you've lost uh, in terms of your, your, your roster spaces. Unbelievable players, starters, both ends of the floor, et cetera, et cetera. How will you integrate some of the veterans coming back, asking them to take on an increased role, and also asking some of your freshmen to be impact players right away? Yeah, that's a great question. We've talked about it a lot, you know, and, and what I've mentioned to them is that everyone in this program is in a new role. For me as a first-time head coach to every single player who's trying to do something, you know, really that, that they haven't done before. And what I think comes with that is an excitement because now it's your turn and it's your opportunity. And I think when people feel like they have opportunity, they're more willing to work, right? Uh, so we have a group that's just fired up because – Who's taking Christine's minutes? Who's taking AT's minutes? You know, um, who's taking Rasay's minutes? Like there, there's a lot of opportunity out there, and I will tell you, we have people that are very capable. Like you guys have not seen Sara play. I've seen her over the past few years on the um, guys team, and when I was the associate head coach, I coached the practice squad, and so Sara was oftentimes with me, and I'm like, this kid can go, she can score, uh, she's phenomenal. Um, so I'm excited. Our freshmen. I just have to start really not even by talking about the basketball, but as people, when you all get to meet Kylan and Jazzy and E and Leilani, you are going to be blown away because they're phenomenal people. And really, in my first year as a head coach, I would rather have that. I would rather have the culture and the character and the personalities and then worry about the talent. Um, and fortunately enough, like, they're an extremely talented group as well. So we've got great pieces. Uh, we don't have as much experience. But again, when you go back to people who are willing to dive in and do whatever the coach is asking them to do, whatever their teammate tells them to do, then I think we have the ability to surprise some people. As you took this job, now that you've had a couple months to digest and everything, <coughs> what's the one thing you wish somebody would have told you before you said, yes, I'll be the head coach? Uh, you know, I, I can't really think of anything where I'm just like, gosh, I wish I would have <coughs> known. There have been a ton of things that I didn't know, you know, and like Lindsay and I talk often. And I remember, you know, I called her and said, did I ever ask you anything like this? You know, like I had questions coming to me and I'm like, 
just kind of shocked at what people think they should ask, shouldn't ask. I don't know. There's just a lot of things that I've been like, wow, did I do that to Lindsay? Did she feel that way when I said this, that, and the other? You know, um, so we've had those types of funny moments. But nothing has been uh, extremely overwhelming or make me feel like, oh, shoot, I wish <laughs> I would have known. Uh, we haven't played a game yet. But it's, it's, it's been all good, and, and I'm really excited about the opportunity. For Sarah and CJ, wanted to know what aspects of your game you, f you most focused on over the summer. And then for Sharman, is there any particular aspect of coaching that you've kind of maybe focused on more now that you're a, a head coach, not an assistant? I think over the summer for me, the main goal has been to stay healthy. Um, I just got healthy right before the summer. So my main goal was to be able to pretty much get into the role that Sharman needs me to, but also... I do have a scorer's mentality and I'm focusing on being able to finish with contact over some great defenders that we have in the Pac-12. So I think that, that's been my main focus. Um, I'd also say similar to Sara is finishing through contact mostly. Um, yeah, just being able to finish through multiple people and be consistent with that because I feel like that's kind of the main thing that we're going to need. I think uh, basketball-wise, I've been focusing a lot on special situations uh, just in that you know I, I'm going to be the one calling the shots so I want to make sure that I'm prepared and so we've added that into I'd say almost every single practice for the last 20 minutes we're doing special situations um, if we have a foul to give uh, you know what type of plays we're calling who we're looking to get uh, the ball to those types of things I just want to make sure we're all on the same page and we're all comfortable because this is our first year in with our defensive terminology our offense or a lot of changes so I want us to be as familiar and comfortable as possible uh, in end of game situations and then for me uh, off the court in terms of just the coaching responsibilities what I've learned is um, there's always something else coming there, there's always some other thing. So like flipping out in the moment about something that's going on isn't going to help you. And just really trying to stay even keeled because you, you think you have something under control and then someone's going to walk into your office and say, oh, this happened. And now you've got to be ready to deal with the next thing as a head coach. So just trying to make sure that I stay consistent in terms of my personality and my reactions and don't let anything get me too emotional. Thanks so much. Thank you.